me begin by extending warm greetings to all who are tuning to tonight's edition of Leadership Matters. Tonight we focus on one of the most important, if not the paramount responsibility of any government, and that is the safety and security of its citizens and residents. It is my view that there is no greater duty of any leader than to keep the citizens and residents safe. It is the calm from which everything else flows. Security encompasses everything, be it our economic, social, or human development. Let me say from the onset that while the maintenance of peace, law, and order is the primary responsibility of government, the issue of national security is everyone's collective responsibility. The vitality of safety and security in nation building is quite evident. If our twin island paradise is seen as unsafe, tourists won't come and investors won't invest. Locals also will be hesitant to fully participate in economic activity. More importantly, however, crime and criminality hinder our social interaction and human growth. Therefore, every citizen has a role to play because like the COVID-19 pandemic, we are still fighting and we are all in this together. I wish to use this forum to implore all, citizens and residents alike, to let your conscience and civic duty guide you. We well remember the situation with crime and criminality. When my government took office in February 2015, given the frightening situation then, it is understandable that the safety and security of our people remain preeminent on our agenda. We immediately set about a systematic assessment of our resources and capabilities. My government in consultation with our security experts and law enforcement officers, and in considering our needs for a safer, stronger future, develop immediate, medium, and long-term goals. The idea was to create, augment, and or redistribute where necessary the capacities needed to arrest the situation that most would admit was out of control then. We adopted measurable goals and set about putting systems in place to achieve them. As part of that assessment, we identified several factors that hampered the proper and effective execution of duties where law enforcement was concerned. Deplorable conditions of police stations, particularly in Old Road, in Newcastle Nevis, in Sandy Point and St. Paul's, to name some, had reached an embarrassingly dangerous level of neglect. We ensured the consequential relocation of officers, lack of equipment and proper support, training needs unfulfilled, all led to low morale in law enforcement and even lower levels of recruitment. We set about correcting these deficiencies by interalia, closing dilapidated police stations in Old Road and St. Paul's, and the construction of new modern facilities in Newcastle Nevis and in Sandy Point in St. Kitts. Indeed, the Sandy Point station can rightly be termed a national security and judicial complex, housing as it will the police, the customs, fire, immigration, and a magistrate's court. We increased respect for the police officers and displacement allowances to those working in Nevis but residing in St. Kitts. We initiated and facilitated better training for police officers to ensure quicker crime-solving methods. We insisted on training 
for officers with special aptitudes, acknowledging the importance of the proper recruitment, placement, and utilization of officers with specific skills in such areas as crime scene investigation, interview and interrogation, detection, etc. We encourage greater visibility of the police in our communities and provided them with equipment and technology to combat today's criminals, including, of course, closed circuit television cameras and more patrol vehicles. Greater investment in forensic training and resource provision. Indeed, a modern forensic lab was built in Tabernacle and it is today improving our crime detection. I want to commend our forensic team leader, Mrs. Latoya Lake Marshall, and her staff for their excellence. Continuous augmentation of patrols with the support from the Defense Force in surveillance operations. We fostered greater partnership between the public and private sectors. We facilitated and supported the peace initiative thereby containing intergang rivalry, crime, and homicide. We passed the largest budgetary allocation for national security in the nation history. For 2021, the budget for national security is $86.2 million. For 2020, the budget was $99 million. In keeping with our view, that we are one nation. The support by my government for national security projects in Nevis has been at the highest level. It is important to note the earnest efforts of the Team Unity government to enhance security in Nevis, where in many cases it was lacking. Noteworthy among these efforts are, my government has contributed $2.4 million towards the construction and furnishing of the Newcastle Police Station. And we recently supply furniture for the station from our central purchasing unit in Bastia. In November 2019, with the support from the government of the Republic of China, an agreement was signed with Vivotech at about $5 million to provide cameras and other accessories, as well as the equipment and furniture for the expansion of the CCTV Command Center in Nevis. The Senkits and Nevis Defense Force, at the request of the Nevis Island Administration, has for over the last four plus years maintained a physical presence on Nevis to support the work of the police and other law enforcement agencies there. The joint efforts have helped to contain and reduce major crimes on the island of Nevis. We have increased the number of law enforcement officers serving in Nevis. The Ministry of National Security currently has for consideration and approval estimate for repairs to stations in Gingerland, Cotton Ground, Butler's and Bart Barracks, and the division headquarters in Charlestown. The estimated cost of this project is nearly $3 million. The Commissioner of Police has prioritized the facilities for action. My government continues to provide the necessary infrastructural and other support to the police in Nevis. Indeed, in our view, insecurity anywhere in the Federation is insecurity everywhere in the Federation. We are therefore committed to do the very best that we can with the resources available. Looking at where we are now to where we were then in February 2015, I believe that even the most reluctant will admit that our efforts, the efforts of Team Unity, have borne much fruit. 
crime and criminality have been on a steady downward trend over the last few years, especially violent crimes. In 2017, we had reduced homicides to 23, as elements of the National Security Plan were being implemented. And in 2019, we recorded a further significant reduction in homicides from 23 to 13. A further reduction to 10 was recorded last year. While one homicide is one too many, this year we have had only four to date. We note that non-fatal shootings stand at zero thus far, and gang activity Gang activities are at their lowest levels in recent memory. We give God thanks and commend our citizens and residents for their discipline and compliance with the rule of law. And we extend our deepest appreciation to all our law enforcement agencies. Permit me to turn our attention to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic which in our view represents a real threat to national security, separate and apart from the obvious health considerations. We are faced with the threat of migration, both legal and illegal. We know that in times of hardship, it is those in the more desperate situations that often seek to relocate first. And that desperation can lead to temptation, even when persons are not ordinarily criminally minded. It is therefore critical that we monitor the movement into St. Kitts and Nevis, and even within our borders. In this regard, we have increased and strengthened regional and international cooperation for border security and intelligence sharing in addition to revamping some of the physical and operational aspects of our immigration system. I am sure our Chief Immigration Officer and the Commander of the Defence Force will have more to say on border protection during the course of tonight's session. Taken as a whole, we have made significant strive towards the delivery of the stronger and safer future, which all of us, good citizens and residents alike, desire and deserve. Through our combined efforts and strategies, we have experienced in the Federation a welcome, sweeping reduction in major crimes, the most egregious of them being homicides. I commend the High Command and the hard-working rank and file of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force and the officers and ranks of the Defence Force. Notwithstanding our outstanding successes to date, we must not become complacent, but remain prepared and vigilant. Even as we continue to shape our St. Kitts and Nevis into our Garden of Eden, let us bear in mind the following. The police must ensure that their presence is continually felt throughout the whole of our Federation. Our people must see the police as partners. Outreach to at-risk persons and communities must of course continue. We aim to be an inclusive society with everyone achieving their legitimate goals. Support for alternative pathways for our at-risk groups is of course critical. Support is equally required for youth group initiatives that reinforce positivity, civic-mindedness, and patriotism. Groups such as Explorers, Pathfinders, Cadet Corps must be encouraged and supported. These all form part of our national strategic plan for crime detection, reduction, and prevention. We must all do our part in the spirit of shared responsibility. 
In closing, I want to welcome our panelists, the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Hilroy Brandy, the Commander of our Defence Force, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Comrie, our Chief Immigration Officer, Mrs. Merslin Hughes, and our National Security Advisor, Major General Stuart Saunders. I thank all of you who are tuning to Leadership Matters, and I look forward to working with you in delivering the stronger and safer future which the people of St. Kitts and Nevis deserve. I could not end without saying thanks to the naive 14,000 plus persons who so far have been vaccinated. Getting vaccinated is a very positive step in protecting yourself, your family, and indeed our beloved country. It is my view that vaccination is now a national imperative if we are to deliver more jobs, better quality of life, and more opportunities for all our citizens and residents. May God bless us all, and may God continue to guide and protect the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you again for tuning in.